Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Battle of Reykjavik. Just a few quick things to get into before we look at the transfers that I've made. Um, so in terms of awards for last season, Erlinger Agnesson was the, the main attraction there with winning the Fans Player of the Year award and the Young Player of the Season award. I came in third in the Icelandic Manager of the Year award, which was quite surprising to me. It must have been because of our... Icelandic Cup victory. Um, so I set expectations for this coming season at a mid-table finish. Just want to see some progress really away from being a team that's going to have an, be having a relegation fight every season. Don't want that all the time. Um, and that is it really, yeah. There's a few, in terms of transfers, there's a few transfers that happened at the late end of last season that wasn't really to do with us well, one of them wasn't really to do with us so I'll just explain about that one first Rolf Toft uh, he moved from FH to Jigarden for £100,000 and we got £5,250 of that due to a selling clause that I put into the deal when he signed for FH and we'll also be getting £8,000 in the next 12 months from that deal too um, so let's have a look at the people that we've sold. So we've released Kardaklia and Bjornsson, go to goalkeepers of course, just weren't getting played or anything, just let go of Johnson and Jack and Mielsen and Birkinson, they weren't getting the games at all. Quite a few young players on loan, as I always do. Doffrey Snorrison, a bid came in for him from FH. And he requested to speak to them, so I wasn't going to say no. I, I never say no, I don't want to make the players unhappy or anything. So I let him speak to them. Then I offered him a contract to try and lure him to, to stay with us. But the bright lights of FH were just too big for him. And he decided to part ways with us. So we sold him for £10,000, but that could rise to £12,250 with future incentives included. And then another player, Stephenson. Jorgen Stephenson, he requested to leave, so I put him on the transfer list, and 15 teams made an offer for him, all with the same bid, which was 37.5 thousand overall, as well as 30% of profit from the next sale, and the 37.5 thousand included 14 and a half k over 12 months, and he decided to go to the French League 2 team Clermont Foot. As you can see, he's played six times and he hasn't scored a goal yet. So that was obviously a bad decision from him. But whatever, it's his life. Um, and in terms of incomings, I brought in Brynjar Marb Jonsson from Stjarnin, I believe it was. Yeah, on a free from Stjarnin. Just as cover for left back and right back, I didn't feel we had enough enough wing backs, especially with Doffrey Snorrison going and me wanting to get rid of Johan Kajunzic because he's just useless. So Bjornsson's come in, he looks like a, a tidy player, he's got good tackling, and he's he's still quite young, he's got the potential to, to improve all of them stats really. A second signing we made was a goalkeeper, James Shea. This guy was originally to replace Aaron's because Aaron's didn't want to sign a contract when I asked him the first 5,000 times during the season, and then with about Two or three days to go until... Was it even that? Was it even two or three days to go? I think it was. I think it was about two or three days to go until his contract was up. There was a news article, so I was thought... A news article said that um, Thompson risks losing Aaron's or something like that. So I just decided to try one more, one last time with an offer. And he wanted to speak to me, so... We've still got Aaron's and we've got this new goalkeeper as well. This goalkeeper, James Shea, Irish goalkeeper, is our first choice. He does seem to be better. He's got amazing handling, a lot, a lot of good good um, attributes for a goalkeeper of this level. Level. He was just recently released from Wimbledon, in fact. So he'd been playing for Wimbledon in League 2, originally an Arsenal player, but he didn't make an appearance for Arsenal and was released and started playing in non-league. He seems like a handy handy goalkeeper for us. Then, 
Stein Grimson got injured and he was going to be out for three months, I think it was. So we needed someone to play at left midfield and that someone was Bojan Ljubicic from Keflavik. And again, very handy player. Um, he's not got much potential, but he's, he's a pretty solid backup player for when Stein Grimson is fit again and start a starting player for a while Stein Grimson is injured. It's a good crossing, good dribbling, passing, technique, everything you'd look for in a, a wide midfielder, well, as, as you'd be playing a winger in our formation. And the final person that we signed, just recently signed him, I noticed that we had a few people out with injuries in defensive midfield. So this guy, Nikolai Hansen, bought him from a Danish team, I believe, was it? Yeah, FC Roskilde for £1,000. Um, he looks like he could be a pretty solid player. Didn't actually get my scouts to scout him beforehand, before I signed him. So quite lucky as well that we found him. <laughs> And that's all the transfer news, so we'll get into the matches we played. But as you know, or as, as you will know if you've watched from the beginning, I don't really care about the friendly results. It's all about getting the fitness up. So, let's quickly go through them. So, we have played like three fixtures in a week. That's sort of to earn money and sort of to get fitness up. Both of them, really. Um, so, we started off with a 2 0 defeat to Fram. Followed that up losing 4 1 to Stjarnan, got a 1 1 draw with Valur, lost 2 0 to Filkir, drew 1 1 with KR Reykjavik, beat Belungovic 1 0, and got beat off IA, IBV, and Breidablik in consecutive matches. Managed to defeat Keflavik 2 0, who won the team that will be playing in the live com in this episode. That's maybe a good sign. Um, defeated by FH 3 0, beat Fjolnir 1 0. 2 2 1 defeat to Grindavik and Vikingur O. Vikingur O Latsvik. They're two teams that are below us in terms of competition. So they're in the leagues below us. Um, and then two draws against Selfoss and Tinderstar. And also, the Upper League Cup, I don't really see as. As you can see, I've arranged friendlies for in between games and upper league cups. I don't really see this as a proper competition. It is just an extension of pre-season, but obviously it'll be a, a long time to go without doing a live commentary if I didn't do one now. So I'm going to do one and begin the upper league cup. And obviously we have got, if we, if we get through the upper league cup, I'll do the, the rest of the competition, of course. Live comm some of that. And then we have the Champions Cup. So I think that's the winner of the Icelandic Premier Division and the winner of the Icelandic Cups, that'll be Stjörnin versus us. But first of all, let's get into today's game against Keflavik. So here we are for the Keflavik game in the Upper League Cup, Group C. There's been one game so far played, and that was Filki and Selfoss, and they drew. They drew 1-1. One, one. So we are Evans' favourites for this one, but the prediction is that it'll go down as a draw. Keflavik think just got promoted back up from the first division to the premier division am i making that up i hate tunnel interviews am i making that up about keflavik uh, oh no they've just got relegated my mistake i couldn't remember if they'd just been promoted or just been relegated but they'd just been relegated Cleared that up, and there's our formation. So we've got Shea and Go, got two Johnsons, Ivan Orn and John in the fullback position. The Rock and Dibiaga at centre back. Stephenson at defensive midfield. Lubicic and Agnesson on the wings. Gunlaugs and Borman at midfielder. Stefan Paul Paulson and Victor Johnson are the attacking midfielder and striker. So of course I would like to get. Some victories on the bounce, on the bounce, on the books. I'd like some victories on the bounce as well. So Palson plays it out wide to Agnesson, crosses it in. I don't think this is going to come to anything. The ball's played back. Stephenson's got it in the centre of the pitch. It's going to Laugson, and that's the end of the highlight. It didn't come to anything. You may have noticed I have. 
I'm not actually playing control and I'm not playing with any team instructions. I'm just trying it out to see how the team play. When I don't tell them to retain possession and stay disciplined, it's something I'll be looking at moving forward. Trying to give the, the players a bit, a bit more creative freedom. As they should be used to playing with each other, the majority of them. I mean, obviously we've got a couple of new players in. The base of the team is the same. Not many chances in this one. Pretty even number of shots. We're, we're, we're way in front on possession, however. And John Johnson's got the ball. Gives it out wide to Agnesson. Can he cross it? He can. Ljubicic is at the back post and it's blocked. And Keflavik come away with the ball. The rocket with an intercepting header. Good Laugson. And that's the end of the highlight. As it stands, this group looks really boring with lots of draws. It's Gunn Laugson. Agnesson now. Plays it through to Palsen. Who shoots, but it was blocked for a corner. And it's Johnson with the ball in, but it's headed away. Keflavik managed to get that away there. Adol Geisen has come away with the ball for them. Gives the Skogsrud Einerson, and he's kicked that out of play, which is handy for us. So we've had, oh, they've just had a magical two shots there to even that up. I was about to say we've had two more shots than them, but not anymore. So I think I might make one change, maybe two. We've got two 6.3 ratings. Victor Johnson's one of them. Bring Adel Steinson on, supposedly our best striker. Bring on Bjornsson as well. Keep an eye on Stephenson on his yellow card there. I do apologise if my voice sounds a bit croaky. I have got some sort of flu or cold or something. And this is really this is really a boring match so far. I apologise. Hopefully it can liven up. The second half wears on. Oh well that's terrible. That could liven it up. Almost. Really just need some sort of spark of creativity. From us, preferably. To make this game a bit more entertaining. Did he keep that in? Really? I'm not so sure about that. Then just passing it around the back four. Bjornsson with the intercept and header. Gunn Laugsen gets there. Adel Steinson, chance for a counter attack maybe. It's Paulsen, play it out wide. Out wide. Okay, that's that's alright. Adel Steinson, oh, I don't know what he was. Why was he having a shot? Why? Why on earth? It's a throw in for Keflavik now. Skogsrud. Eliasson. Robertson. Good tackle from Ibiaga, there's just shot, just wide. Stephenson is looking exhausted. He's signaling he wants to be subbed off, so I will oblige. And I'll have to put Sindri in defensive midfield for the last 25 minutes. So Adel slides in with the ball, holds it up, gives it a Palsen. Hits that towards Agnesson. Can he cross it? He can. Alan Steinson saved. Is that going to sneak in? Oh, just cleared. Bit of a goal mouth scramble then. We've got just under 25 minutes left in this one. It's all to play for still. With the ball in. Oh, they've gone and scored, haven't they? Oh no, Shea saved it. He's wearing the same colour as them. Getting confused. I've used all my substitutions, haven't I? Have I? 
I always get confused about this, don't I? No, I can use all seven substitutions. Okay. Take Palson off, bring Sigurdsson on. What else? Can I... That would just be subbing for the sake of subbing, really. Let's, that was to move him there. Yeah, we'll do that. Oskarsson on for Ljubicic. And then bring Goodmanson on for the Rock. Oh. So there's a limit. There's a limit of five subs. It's good to know. I'll try and remember that for future Upper League Cup games. Oh, that's not what you like to see, is it? So Agnesson is injured. Brilliant. Marvellous. So we're down to 10 men because of injury. It's especially annoying as Agnesson is was one of our better players last season. But let's see how we go. Hopefully it won't be that bad of an injury. It's Adel Steinson, he'll move out to the right. Bjornsson, Magdussen, Gunnlaugsson. Sigurdsson shoots and that's well wide. And then he's probably 17 years old now. He was 16 when I first found him. Come on. Can we sneak a win? Great pass from Johnson. Adel Steinson. He's in space. Oh, he wastes it. He just wastes it constantly hitting the ball off the defenders instead of finding the player to pass to. So, late chance for Keflavik, perhaps. I thought they'd scored. And this group is the group of draws at the moment. There hasn't been a victory yet. There's two teams left to play, unless anyone gets a result in the last few minutes here. It's going to be down to Breidablik and Valor to fight out to see who can be the first to win a game in Upper League Cup Group C. Half a minute left. And Kevlovic have got the ball. So he supposedly had most of the possession. Shots have been pretty even. Our accuracy is a bit concerning compared to theirs. But a nil-nil draw. It's better than a defeat, in it? Oscarson, get it out. There we go, full time. Nil-nil in this what I regard as a friendly cup competition. Not bad at all. Not good, but not bad. So it's two nil nils in that move, that's terrible. So Shea makes his Viking Girl Reykjavik debut, he got a 6.8 rating. Not bad. He's valued at 18k as well. It's pretty good, sign him on a free. Might be able to make a profit out of him. So that is it for this episode. We will be back with either the knockout rounds of the Upper League Cup, if we get that far, or definitely the Champions Cup against what I think should be Stjarnin. It's their equivalent of the Community Shield. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get all my content when it comes out. Feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.